ever actually like built your own operating system. Okay, maybe not. But wouldn't that be kind of cool? Today we're going to try to kind of get our hands dirty with this idea at least. We're diving deep into building a custom Linux kernel. Which, if you don't know, that's the core of basically any Linux system. It really is, yeah. And thankfully, we've got a great guide from Phoenix NP. Now, these guys, they basically live in server rooms, right? They know their stuff. So if anyone knows kernels, it's yeah. yeah. And the coolest part is they break it all lay down into seven steps. Nice. Which, all right, seven sounds like a lot. It's not as bad as it sounds. But they make it pretty darn simple. They even walk you through this real-world thing with certificates, which oh, yeah. those always trip me up. And to top it off, we're also going to be checking out mpv.io, which it's this super customizable media player. Yeah. And it really shows you what you can DO when you can actually tinker with that kernel. It kind of unlocks everything. For real. Yeah. So before we get ahead of ourselves, right, let's back up a sec. Yeah. Most of us, we experience Linux through... What, like Ubuntu? Yeah, distributions like that. Those user-friendly versions, exactly. Yeah. But the kernel itself, that's like the hidden engine. Totally. It's the bridge between your hardware, the physical stuff, and then all the software you use. Mm. It's managing how your computer even boots up, how programs share resources, everything. It's kind of like, if you think of your computer like a house. Okay, yeah. The kernel is the foundation. You can move into a pre-built house, sure. But what if you want to customize the layout, add what? some crazy features? Right, make it your own. Exactly. That's what building your own Linux kernel is all about. I like that analogy. And like with any good construction project, you got to start with the blueprint. Makes sense. And in this case, that's the source code. It's basically instructions written in a programming language tells your computer how to build that kernel. OK, so it's like the recipe, but for your OS. Exactly. So step one, Phoenix NFP tells us is to download that source code straight from the official kernel website which right now it's version 6.0.7. So we're getting the freshest ingredients for our kernel recipe. Love it. But downloading is just the first step. What do we actually do with this source code? Well, we got to unpack it. Naturally. Step two is using this command, tar fafvf. Think of it like opening yep. all the boxes and materials before you start building something. All right. So it's like pre Construction prep work. Yeah. Getting everything laid out and organized. Exactly. Gets that source code all ready for the next steps. Speaking of, what kind of tools are we talking about here? What's in the old kernel building toolkit? Step three is all about gathering those essential software packages. So we've got all our, what was it, source code all unpacked? That's right. Toolkit ready to go. Ready to build. Okay, so like what's the next exciting thing on our Linux kernel to-do list? Well, now, now we get to the really fun part. Oh, customization. All right, let's do it. Yeah. Step four is all about configuring the kernel. Make it yours. Okay, so instead of just like moving into that pre-built house, we're designing the floor plan, picking out the what well, the fancy faucets and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You got it. So it comes with a default configuration, right? Mm -hmm. But you can change it up. There's this command, make menu config. Catchy. Right. And that brings up this whole menu where yeah. you can enable, disable features, mess with how it manages memory, optimize for like specific hardware you've got. So it's powerful stuff. Yeah. But also, kind of sounds like you could mess things up pretty bad if you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You really got to be careful here. Think of it like, I don't know, making changes to the load bearing walls in that house we were talking about, you know? <laughs> you're not careful. Whole thing's going to come down. Not ideal. Not ideal at all. Same goes for the kernel. You go messing with things randomly, you could end up with a system that just doesn't work. So not like randomly flipping switches in the config menu just to see what happens. Got it. Exactly. A little Linux knowledge goes a long way at this stage. But assuming you've you know been careful, got everything said how you want it, next up, we actually build the kernel. That's step five, right? Yep. Step five, we hit it with the make command. That sounds simple enough. Oh, it makes it sound simple. No. This is like hitting that go button on a massive, crazy, complicated Lego set. Computers taking all that source code, all your configurations, and like actually putting it all together. So that's probably when my computer fan starts going into overdrive, huh? Probably. Oh. Now, Phoenix Snap did mention something you might run into here, especially on Ubuntu. Uh-oh. Something about certificates. <laughs> Yeah, I hate those things. They always trip me up. What is it about them? <laughs> it's a bit technical, but basically Ubuntu might have some conflicting certificates, yeah. and that can keep the whole build process from finishing. Of course. So what do we do? Well, thankfully, Phoenix NAP gives you the fix. Just a couple of commands to disable those pesky certificates, and you're good to go. It's like they knew exactly what we'd need every step of the way. 
okay, so we've dodged the certificate bullet. We've got our kernel built. What now? What are the finishing touches on our masterpiece? Okay, so step six and seven are all about getting that new kernel of yours up and running. Step six is installing the kernel. Laying down the foundation, so to speak. Exactly. Then step seven, we got to update the bootloader. Okay, got to be honest. I've heard of the bootloader, but explain it to me like I'm five. What does that even do? Okay, so think of the bootloader like the starting pistol for your computer. You power it on, bootloader is the very first thing that runs, and it's in charge of loading the operating system, including your nice new kernel, into memory. Ah, uh, okay. So by updating the bootloader, we're telling our computer, hey, use this shiny new kernel instead of the default one. Exactly. It's how you make sure that custom kernel actually takes over when you boot up. All right, so we built ourselves a custom kernel, installed it, even told our computer to use the darn thing. We did. It's like we went full Bob the Builder here. <laughs> but before we, I don't know, start handing out virtual hard hats, mm. let's talk about WHY someone would even D on this. Right. Why not just stick with, like, the pre-built kernels that come with, you know, Ubuntu, Fedora, all those? Right, that's a great question. Why? And that's where our second source comes in, mpv.io. Okay. So MPV, it's a media player, open source, highly customizable. It's known for really squeezing every last bit of performance out of your hardware, especially for video playback. Hold on, hold on. Media player. Kernel building. Connect the dots for me here. Okay, so MPV and other open source software like it, they benefit from the tweaks people make to their kernels. Imagine someone's super into video editing, right? They want the smoothest playback possible. They could build a custom kernel, optimize it for video processing, and then share those improvements with the whole world. So you're saying some random person's like late night kernel tinkering could actually make its way into software that I use every day, even if I can barely install a printer driver. That's exactly what I'm saying. It's the beauty of open source. It's constantly evolving, improving, all thanks to the community. Okay, so maybe it's less like building a house, more like, I don't know, a community garden or something. Everyone brings their own skills, their own little improvements, and the whole thing gets better for everyone. I kind of like that analogy, and it's what makes Linux so unique. It's not just about using the software, it's about understanding it, contributing to it. It's about taking control, yeah. right, instead of just accepting what we're given. So for anyone listening who's maybe inspired to, you know, give this whole kernel thing a try, yeah, what would your priority be? What would you optimize for? Crazy gaming performance, battery life that make a Tesla jealous. There's a whole world of possibilities out there. Who knows? Maybe you'll be the one sharing your custom kernel magic with the world someday. I love it. Until then, happy customizing, folks.